Merry Christmas, everybody. This is Mike Dushman from Stateless Code. And as is kind of turning into a tradition, I'm going to do a, a Christmas episode here uh, and touch upon the, the new Ruby release. Uh, Ruby does a release every every year on Christmas Day, and it's the primary and uh, l language we use here in my favorite uh, programming language. So it's kind of just turned into a a thing where uh, I do a Christmas episode, take a look at the release notes of Ruby, and um, take a, a quick test drive in IRB or whatever. And then separately, we'll create some stuff on the backlogs for uh, nerddice.com, which is our uh, current project where we're building a Ruby on Rails application to manage tabletop role playing, as well as Nerd Dice, which is the Ruby gem that uh, I started developing a couple of years ago and um, need to add Ruby 3.2 to the, uh, the list of CI and stuff like that. But before we get started on the Ruby and the coding stuff, I just wanted to take a few minutes to reflect on um, the celebration of the incarnation and birth of Jesus Christ. So um, this is very important to me. My uh, the, the most important uh, thing to me is uh, my relationship with God, and it drives what I do here at Stateless Code. I've got a uh, video series called Why Stateless Code, where I co kind of illuminate some of those things, like why give these things away for free, uh, the idea of the generosity and the sovereignty of God, uh, and even the episode Why So Stateless, where I go through and say, because Jesus Christ has come, uh, died, um, rose again from the dead, ascended to heaven, is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, um, sent the Holy Spirit uh, to us as a indwelling and comforter, uh, that you don't need to use a sword. So uh, I'm a Christian anarchist, and I don't believe that the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is advanced by uh, the use of the sword. And I think the uh, the celebration of the Incarnation is a great time to illuminate that and, and think about it some. So you had the God of the universe coming into the world as a helpless baby. Uh, and then as he grew um, and did all these things, there was never an indication that I'm going to uh, redeem my people or uh, reign or rule in such a way that takes the... Uh, the sword and you're going to do this or else. That's Caesar's methodology. That's the first Adam way of doing things. Jesus as the second Adam didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The disciples often when they're asking and thinking about Jesus's kingdom coming, they keep asking the question, well, are you going to uh, take the, uh, overthrow Herod or Caesar or, or one of these things and restore the kingdom of Israel. Israel. It's a, it's a common refrain, refrain throughout the Gospels. And the last time you hear that question asked is right at the time of the ascension. So they, they ask that one last time. Is now, is it, are we going to take the kingdom and uh, overthrow Caesar? And after the sending of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, that's never a concern ever again. Uh, Paul goes on in his epistles to um, elaborate on this. Our weapons are not carnal. So uh, Jesus conquers the world not through swords and force, but by uh, love your enemies and do not repay evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. And when you do these things, when you have uh, that, those temptations from the the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, when you have the opportunity to um, repay evil for evil and you don't do it, or when you have the opportunity to answer your, your spouse, your family member, love your neighbor as yourself, those are your closest neighbors, uh, and you don't respond with wrath or with um, unkindness or um, with hatred, that um, those things have generational and lasting impacts that we should expect the world to be changed by the working of the Holy Spirit in us and how we uh, live out 
the um, the gospel to one another. And that's how uh, people see something attractive in Jesus, and even to the point of of dying for the gospel. So you, again, the sword has has created Christians, but it's been mostly on the person who is wielding the sword, killing uh, martyrs. Uh, that refusal to uh, to take up arms in defense uh, against those things when renounce Jesus or die, and no, I'll I'll trust in God. God is powerful enough to deliver me, and He will deliver me. But not, but if not, know that I will not uh, bow down and uh, use Caesar's tactics in order to defeat Caesar. Uh, so things to reflect on, uh, and I, I think things that particularly the American church needs to reflect on, uh, this culture war, uh, mentality. Oh, we just need to, uh, get enough people. Then we can take over the government and get the right people in office. And if that's your, you're, you're just setting your sights too low. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ um, is is going to do far more than uh, we're going to force people to conform, uh, get them to act externally. Unlike the law of the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit actually can change hearts and can uh, get actual uh, turning toward the Lord in righteousness. So uh, that's my um, application for this, for each of us. Um, I, I put it at the end of uh, my outro for each of the videos, don't uh, initiate force against peaceful people or uh, vote for or support others who are going to do the same. So, uh, and I think that's a really important application of the incarnation of Jesus Christ uh, and his current rule sitting at the right hand of God the Father. So, uh, I think that's enough for now. Uh, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to sing a joy to the world in four-part harmony uh i'll try to warn you before that happens so that you can hit stop um it's uh not going to be the the most glorious thing in the history of the world but i'm having fun doing it the um and then we'll take a look now at some new information about ruby 3.2 want to create your own ruby gem but don't know where to start Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelistcode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. All right, so let's take a look at Ruby 3.2. Uh, this is the Ruby website here, ruby-lang.org, and uh, we can see right kind of here the uh, the note that Ruby 3.2.0 has been released officially. We go here, uh, you'll be able to see the release notes here. So uh, the top headline here is the um, the WebAssembly support. Uh, provides some information about the background, the use case, um, things like the um, Try Ruby's Playground would be an example of this. Uh, thinking about things like uh, th th things where you could use interactive Ruby in a browser, this uh, provides you with some some opportunities here. Thinking from a stateless code standpoint, maybe I want to do something along the lines of uh, tutorials or something like that where you could uh, check the editor and the output and um, do something like that with uh, Ruby kind of natively rather than using uh, before you maybe have to do eval or something like that, which isn't the um, obviously the safest way to go about some of these things. Um, and you can see the um, the playground um, 
information here. Uh, so I recommend trying that out. You can do things right in uh, the browser and run it. Um, and the release notes talk more about this. So uh, and then we've got the um, the YJIT, um, and I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, uh, is ready for production, no longer experimental, um, and talks about kind of some of the places that this is supported um, faster than the um, Ruby interpreter, um, lazy allocation, um, the uh, regular expression improvements are important. So the uh, ability to successfully or quickly evaluate a regular expression um, is important because as noted here, uh, regular expression denial of service is a potential for one of these things. So it's got some of the kind of math comparing uh, Ruby 3.1 and 3.2, and you can barely even see the, um, the the red line indicating Ruby 3.2. So, um, in terms of things like that, um, Ruby 3.2 is a, a huge step up in terms of performance for regular expressions. Um, and there's information about uh, how you can do that. You can now set uh, regular expression timeout if you need to, um, and it will throw a, an exception instead of just um, carrying on forever. You can do it uh, with the regular expression constructor, uh, syntax suggestion, error highlighting, um, kind of in the, the Ruby interpreter um, and IRB kind of environments. Um, the ability to um, keyword rest arguments um, the ability to a constant constant assignment um, some changes there um, and it provides some information about the um, some of the other things that are going on here um, the data class um, kind of provides some information about uh, these um, changes that have occurred to the core objects in the Ruby library. Um, and you can, you can read, you can go in and try these things out. Um, there are some removed uh, methods here. Um, they were, um, deprecated and are now um, officially removed. Um, there are, so libyaml and libffi um, are no longer um, bundled. So that may change some of your, um, how you do things when you're installing Ruby on a local system. You may need to um, install uh, libyaml um, dev um, or libffi um, and provides you um, examples on how to do those things. Um, the, um, the C API um, updates in particular with, uh, with random, which may impact some of, we do do some ran stuff with random in, um, nerd dice, so it'd be interesting to see um, what is, um, what changes occur there. The, um, and then talking some about standard library updates, bundler, bundler Ruby gems, ERB, IRB, um, updates to default gems, um, and kind of official bundled gems, uh, information about how to download. And then uh, I would recommend also the, um, for some additional uh, resources, if you haven't yet, uh, I would highly recommend 
subscribing to Ruby Weekly. Uh, here's an example of an issue here um, where it provides you kind of the news, how to articles. Um, it's a great resource for, uh, for Ruby. Um, and, and the Ruby ecosystem, including Rails, um, and including um, things like if you wanted to check out information about uh, Hanami, which is um, kind of a different paradigm for building uh, web applications with Ruby rather than Rails. Um, Ruby Weekly is a great digest that curates what's going on in the world of Ruby. Um, so uh, in addition, uh, in particular, you can look at the, um, one of the things we did note in the um, release notes was that uh, change to data define. There's a, um, an article that I got from Ruby Weekly on um, kind of how this works. So I'd recommend, uh, recommend uh, checking that out, reading that as a resource. And then also uh, familiarizing yourself with what with what's new in IRB. Um, so these are both good resources. I'll put in the um, the links and notes for the um, for the video so that you can check them out on your own. And let's before we close here, let's uh, try to actually get. Ruby 3.2 installed on our system. So um, currently running at 3.1.3. Let's see if we can get 3.2.0 installed. This is on an Ubuntu system um, running Ubuntu 22.04 uh, on this. And um, well, and I'm using RVM as my Ruby uh, version manager. So you can see here, um, we've got a bunch of different patch versions of Ruby dating back to 2.7.2 when I installed um, Ubuntu on this system. And now we'll see if we can install 3.2. The last When I did 3.1.3, I was really surprised at how fast um, Ruby installed. So we'll see if that um, stays the case with Ruby 3.2. It, 3.1.3 installed in like 15 seconds. So um, we'll try. And last time I paused, um, we'll kind of show in real time how fast this um, takes place, assuming that it, yeah, so that's, um, Got Ruby here. And we'll try one of the items here. We'll try the show commands. You can see it's auto completing here better than what we uh, had previously. So it's printing that and then uh, returning nil. So that I think will go, I think that's enough for now. We'll go into um, Nerd Dice and add a backlog item. And then do something similar with um, Nerd dice we will go to the nerd dice backlog and add Do a, a video for uh, 
for nerddice.com where we'll upgrade to Ruby 3.2 and then we'll do a video for Nerd Dice uh, itself where we do 3.2. I think that's enough for now. Obviously, uh, if you continue watching and uh, consuming these videos um, on uh, YouTube at stateless, our channel is Stateless Code. Uh, you can also go to statelesscode.com, uh, which I've got, gotten a little bit better about trying to uh, keep up with the, um, the videos posted. YouTube is still the um, the quickest pl place and the most up to date place to consume our content. Uh, likes, comments, subscribes uh, certainly help us in um, getting the, the word out there and um, there's no at this point um, profit motive to it uh, I just want to teach people how to code and um, make people better computer programmers so um, whether you um, code along through every video or just pick up the ones that are of topics of interest to you um, we uh, appreciate any interaction that we have. So uh, Merry Christmas again, and I'll send things over to some mediocre singing. So this mediocre karaoke session, um, I do mediocre karaoke at the end of each retro and then kind of during some of the special news and events episodes like this um, Christmas episode that I'm doing. So um, this isn't technically karaoke. So I'm going to be singing four part harmony of um, Isaac Watts joy to the world. And um, we'll go from there. I, I still uh, have to warn you. I'm not the best singer. I'm a, a professional computer programmer for a reason. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. Um, well, See you at the end. Joy to the world, the Lord it is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains, repeat the sound, repeat the sound, repeat the sound, repeat the sound, repeat, repeat the sound, joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curses far as the curses found, far as the curses far as the curses far as the curses far as the curses found. He rules the world with truth and and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of and his wonders love, of his and love, wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love so you were expecting joy to the world, but after experiencing this, you are now a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, the grief of having listened to me sing. So, uh, well, not going to stop, if that's what you're hoping. Uh, I'm going to keep singing. And maybe I'll do some more uh, four-part harmony for hymns and stuff like that, even for some of the uh, pop music songs that I cover on karaoke. I might try doing a little bit more harmony and stuff like that. But um, that's uh, that's a wrap. Ah, get it, a wrap, Christmas. Yeah. I'll, I'll just stop talking now. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. 
There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.